Yeah, and I mean, this is a really interesting thing to me because it feels to me like when Donald Trump came along, and I know, I think you were a supporter of him, and I think now maybe not so much, but you tell me if I'm wrong about that. But the bigger issue, though, is that he did seem to focus on this idea that the system, uh, to use a, just a sort of often used term for it, um, is really kind of rigged against working class people, and that the weight of money to create laws, create rules, create employment contracts has really shortchanged working people. Tell me a bit about that, and has the we talk about the Democrats having lost their way with the working class, but has the Republican right done so too by trying to be all about, oh, well, we're just you know economically libertarian and you know we don't really care about the effects because, hey, that's the market. Yeah, so I think I, I, I did support Trump and I still think uh, as far as uh, the GOP field goes, the Republican candidates, he's still the one that's closest to this older tradition, which in the United States you might call the uh, the Eisenhower-Nixon tradition, which recognized that kind of unhindered market tyranny is is bad. Uh, not, it's not good for conservative things that conservatives should cherish, like family, patriotism, uh, you know, just the dignity of ordinary people. Uh, so I think he, he's great on that count in terms of rhetoric, especially in 2015, 16, you know, he broke with the party's consensus on free trade. He's, he voiced something that a mm -hmm. lot of uh, rank and file Republicans had felt, which is that opening up trade to China without any kind of restriction had left, you know, vast swaths of the heartland, you know, bereft of good working class jobs in case instead we got, you know, opioid addiction and precarious, lousy, low wage jobs. Um, and to give, give credit where it's due, he's he set in motion a kind of what's called a decoupling now, not just from the unit between the United States and China, but even across the develop de across the West in general. So give credit where it's due. But I too often become disappointed with Republicans because they use this kind of working class rhetoric, um, but then once in office, uh, they sort of fall back into their comfortable. Uh, grooves, a kind of free market fundamentalism, free market dogmatism that I actually don't think is conservative. And, it's, more, it's more libertarian than conservative. And, you know, that free market dogmatism, I mean, you mentioned Nixon before, and I guess, you know, that started to become a big thing in the 1980s. But is what you're saying basically that's what happened is that the conservative movement, um, the p parties on the right, have forgotten this idea that they're all about humans with individual dignity, which is, of course, what Reagan talked about in regards to the fight against the Soviet Union, and now treats them more as numbers on a spreadsheet, cogs in a wheel, and it doesn't matter if you're a factory worker in Ohio or a factory worker in Guadalajara, you're the same person, and it's all just numbers on a spreadsheet. That's very well put. I mean, by the way, Reagan was far less of a, you know, kind of do doctrinaire libertarian than some of his admirers think. I mean, he was pr a protectionist of industry in various um, ways, and so I think I think that's absolutely a, a good way to uh, summarize that. You know, there are a lot of conservatives who say, oh, you know, family formation is collapsing oh church attendance rates are collapsing oh uh, you know fertility rates are down and so on but they never connect how it could be that are the shape of our economy the fact that a lot of you know for example in the united states real wages haven't grown for the bottom half of the labor market they've been really stagnant for two generations um could that have a role in the fact that people don't feel secure enough to start families to want to they don't have the time or the sort of sense of peace and it's needed to want to worship, et cetera, et cetera. So some of the goods that the uh, conservative movement rightly wants to protect can be threatened by by the sort of unhindered market. And so um, I do think there is a change now a little bit on the right. And I I, I think Trump set that in motion and he sh we should be uh, giving uh, credit to, to him for that. <clears throat> So, Mabari, what you seem to be saying then is that parties on the center right, whether they're in Australia or the United States, should try and actually give people a bit more of that protection that they're craving around their family, their work, and their lifestyle, and not just leave it all to, well, everybody kind of do what you feel and it'll all work out in the end. Is that basically what you're saying here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, I mean, the trade question, free trade one is very, is a very uh, good example. In the United States, 
there are various parts of the heartland which are utterly devastated by the opioid crisis um, now by this mm. sort of synthetic called fentanyl. And if you take a map of which regions have the worst opioid crisis, it it almost uncannily overlaps with the map of areas that were most severely exposed to liberalized trade with China. Um, and so that's a very, yeah. that's a really damning indictment, not just of kind of Clintonian Democrats who pushed that in the 1990s, but of course of the conventional Republican Party, which then resulted in the backlash of Trumpism. You could tell a similar story about the North of England and Brexit, um, you know, ju just looking at growth alone without thinking about other goods that conservatives are supposed to cherish leaves you with, you know, it, it, it hollows out industry, it hollows out good sound union jobs that can support family life, et cetera. Mm. Um, yeah, no, so I think you're summing, summing it up well. I don't think it's purely an American problem. I think it's a, it's a problem across the developed world that um, you know leaders, responsible leaders who sense that there's something wrong and are willing to admit that have to confront. Otherwise, I think we will see other waves of angry populism that will make the Trump and Brexit movement seem you know, tame by comparison.